Welcome to the second Sprite Delight tutorial. I'll be demonstrating some advanced features and techniques you can use to create normal maps for various kinds of game assets. With some of these options, you will be able to not only generate normal maps for character and object sprites, but also for artwork like background tiles. While there is a short mouse over description for all options, you probably wonder what exactly some of the options do. I have talked about the general normal map options in the first tutorial. Scale, volume boost and sharpness are the options you have for every normal map, regardless of how it was created, even if it was just loaded from another source. On the lower part of the panel, there are some specific options you only have for the generation of a normal map directly from a sprite. The shape intensity determines how voluminous the overall shape of the subject turns out. With the detail intensity, you have control over the strength of the surface details inside the overall shape. I set this to zero here, so you can see the effect of a different shape intensity and the shape volume more clearly. A low shape volume value makes the overall shape more like a bevel, whereas a higher value inflates the shape to a smooth and voluminous object. When using the auto checkbox for the shape volume, Sprite Delight automatically detects the average size of shapes within your sprite and chooses an appropriate shape volume based on this value. I am using some sprites of the game Bravery and Greed to show how the art can be processed in batches of sprites that belong together. For the walls, ground and ceiling, I am using one of the sprites to determine the best settings that will be used for all other sprites in this category. First of all, I am going back to the sprite tab to manually pick the background color which otherwise would have been the color of the top left pixel. In this case, the top left pixel is part of the subject, so we manually pick the background color here, which is a completely transparent white for all the processed sprites. We now open the batch processing dialog, only to check the option that locks the background color. That means for all processed sprites, the current background color will be used as the background color. We close the dialog, the option will still be checked when reopening it. Next, we can see that there is a slope at all edges of the normal map, which we do not want here because the sprites should be tileable at the top and the side of the image. To get rid of the slope and to make the normal map tileable, we simply check the bleed option, which expands the shape over the edges behind the scenes, so the tool expects additional solid pixels outside the image next to each pixel that touches an edge. As we want the tiles to be processed consistently, we deactivate the Auto Shape Volume option and manually choose a value that matches the batch of sprites. The current sprite is a bit larger than the average size of the batch because of the smaller corner tiles, so I choose a value that is smaller than the Auto Detected Shape Volume for the sprite. For smoother edges in the details, you can pick a different gradient detection operator. Pixel Perfect just takes the four adjacent pixels into account for every pixel, whereas the D operator uses all nine neighbor pixels while putting more emphasis on the direct neighbors. The Sobel operator puts even more weight onto the indirect neighbors, which leads to stronger blurry edges. I also check the Sprite Alpha option here to use the transparency of the original sprite for the normal map. So when we are happy with the settings, we click the batch processing button again and select the input folder and the desired output folder as well as the desired output maps. Remember the lock background color. For this batch of sprites, the background color will not be detected, but the manually picked transparent white will be used for all of them. Processing the sprites now goes almost instantly if they are not too large and we end up with nice normal maps for background tiles that can be randomly placed next to each other. Last but not least, I would like to introduce a feature that has been requested by various users who use special perspectives. If you want to process isometric art or any other unusual perspective, the axis rotation options come in handy, as they allow for rotation adjustments of the normals around the X, Y and the Z axis independently. I hope this tutorial was helpful to understand some of the more advanced features of normal app generation with Sprite Delight. Thanks for watching.